There is a story about a couple who had just finished celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. And so after spending a day in celebration with family and friends, they went home. And so the husband turned to his wife when they got home and he said, honey, why don't you sit down and I'll make you a cup of tea and a sandwich. And so he proceeded to put the water on and heat up the water for a cup of tea. And he made her a sandwich. And when everything was ready, he set it before her. And as he set it down, she began to cry. And she said, of all the times that I could have been first, and now you give me this. I am sick and tired of being second in your life. All these years you've put me second. I'm tired of you giving me the heel of the bread. <laughs> and he just sat there stunned. And when she was done, he just looked at her and he said, but it's my favorite piece. You see, married 50 years, and when you think you know everything that there is to know about a person, more is revealed. And so this husband, you see, revealed more about himself. That's epiphany, revelation, manifestation. And so for centuries, a people who lived in darkness cried out to God, Help! Save our souls. S-O-S. Come, help us. Save our souls. And God's answer to that S-O-S is that child that lies in the manger. And it's hard to understand. It's hard sometimes to try to wrap yourself around the mystery of God's response to that S-O-S. How is it possible that all of the power in the universe is contained in that small child? How is that possible? How is it possible that when we come to celebrate Holy Mass, that God himself, body, blood, soul, and divinity, the entire trinity is contained in that small host that we receive? How is that possible? And yet, my brothers and sisters, we are going to spend an eternity, and it will not be enough time for God in an eternity to continue to reveal himself to us. And just when we think that there is everything that we need to know about God, boom, something happens. And more is revealed. More is revealed. And that's the mystery. That's God's answer to our SOS. And I'm going to bet you that many of you who are in, a, in this church this morning, when you take into consideration with everything that you learned, everything that you believed, and now still hold near and dear and true in your hearts, you learned in that Catholic school, or a Catholic school, some time ago. Just for the heck of it, let's see a show of hands of how many people in this church this morning went to a Catholic school. You see, there's a considerable number of people whose hands were raised. And so some of you, maybe many of you, can remember when you were little and you went to Holy Rosary Catholic School, which used to be part of this parish. It was connected to this parish. It was a parochial school. Parochial means parish. And then it became Holy Rosary High. And some of you, maybe that's the only school that you went to. And then from Holy Rosary High, it became Rochester Catholic. And then from Rochester Catholic, it became St. Elizabeth's and Seton School. 
And so God revealed himself to you, for those of you who went to Catholic school, in that building over there. And for many of us, it was the sisters that taught us our faith, that gave us what we know and what we hold true and what we hold near and dear to our hearts today. But just as there was an SOS from the people to God back then, there is another SOS today. Today's SOS is save our school. Save our school. Because we are at a critical point, we are at a critical juncture with the school. We have been mandated to put a sprinkler system into the school, which is going to cost somewhere in the vicinity of close to a quarter of a million dollars. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. But when you take into consideration the safety of the children, no price. You can't put a price on that. And at one time, there were over 300 kids in that school. It was bursting at the seams. But through the years, through economic downturns, and for more than one reason, the enrollment has dropped. And now we are at a point where the enrollment is right at about 108 students. It's at a critical juncture. And it doesn't make sense to put that kind of money into a building if the enrollment is going to continue to drop to a point where we can no longer pay the bills. And so we're asking, you see, we have to save our school. And so the bishop is getting involved. And he's going to be here next weekend for all the masses. And he has said that he personally wants to become involved in saving the school. It would be one thing for him to say, Father Paul and Father Dan, I want you guys to get together and I want you to see what you can do to save the school. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying, I'm going to come and I'm going to get involved and we together are going to do this. So I said to him, Bishop, I said, if you're willing to do that, I said, you're going to be sending a huge message to the community of people of Rochester. And so for next year, he has set the benchmark at the school at 115, 115. And Suzanne Booten, who's the principal of the school, has already informed me that we're already there. You see, the problem becomes, it doesn't take a lot when you consider that when mothers and fathers are sitting at kitchen tables to try to figure out their budgets and how they're going to make ends meet and balance things, that kids who are going to Catholic schools or private schools today, uh, their parents are making a sacrifice. And so it costs in a vicinity of about $4,800 per child to go to school at St. Elizabeth Seton. Now that's a good chunk of change. So when parents are trying to balance things and they're just trying to decide what to do, uh, it doesn't take a lot to figure out that you can save this amount of money and our children can go to the public school. And so over the years, we've seen a decline in enrollment. And while there is no evidence to point to this, okay, I believe that some of the problems that we're seeing in our society today might be attributable to this downturn in Catholic schools. You know, we don't have to sell what we do well. I like that saying. We don't have to sell what we do well. And what we do well in Catholic schools is not so much about education, it is about formation. You can't talk about God in public schools. You can't talk about Scripture in public schools. 
can't talk about morality in public schools. And so those of you who are formed in Catholic schools, there's no price tag that you can put upon what you received then and what you know to be true now. It formed you as people. And so while it costs about $4,800 a year to send a child to St. Elizabeth Seton, the cost per pupil is somewhere in the vicinity of $6,700 per year. So already there is a, we're in the, we're in the minus column. Now, as I said, we're not in the business of making money. That's not the reason that the Catholic Church got involved in schools and hospitals in the first place. It's part of the gospel message. Do good. It's part of the gospel. And so for years, in a way to proclaim the gospel, that's what we've done. We've formed kids. And so the bishop's idea is, Let's get as many kids into this school as we possibly can. And by doing that, we lower the cost per pupil. And at this point, he's committed to freezing the tuition. And if we can get more kids into the school and lower the cost per pupil, we begin to lower the tuition. Some of you can remember, or many of you can remember, when you went to Catholic schools for nothing, because you had these good sisters, just like we have here, right here. They labored, see, for nothing. The other piece to this is that there are teachers and a principal who teach in that school who could leave there tomorrow and probably triple their salary in the public school system. But they teach there because they're committed to doing what they do as a labor of love, for the love of God and his gospel, and for the love of your kids. Oftentimes, we forget about that, about that sacrifice, that piece of it. And so Bishop Labashi is going to be here next weekend. And then the following weekend, he's going to be at St. Mary's. And at St. Peter's, he's going to celebrate all the Masses. But this has to be a concerted effort. The whole community needs to get involved with this and get behind this. Because I don't think I have to tell you that if the school closes, that is going to have a significant impact on this community in Rochester. 108 kids who are taken out of that school and put into the public school system it's going to have an impact on the tax base. And so nobody wants that to happen. Nobody wants that to happen. I said to you, we don't have to sell what we do well. One of the things that I know that parents are most concerned about, and grandparents too for that matter, when kids go off to school in the morning, are my children going to be safe? That would have never been a question 25 years ago. But it is today. Are my children going to be safe? We don't have to sell what we do well. And so the bishop is going to be here, and he's going to be talking about his plan. So pass the word. And I hope the church is full to come and listen to what our shepherd has to say. You remember, I said, that sometimes we think we have all the answers about people. And yet God's answer to our SOS was in his son. And he continues to unfold the mystery and reveal himself. And I believe with all my heart that it is not beyond God and his ability to fill that school once again. He just needs you and I to be willing to do the footwork. We don't have to sell what we do 